Is ennui in our economy evolving into ebullience? And are we poised for efficacious economic effect? One thing at this point I can say is 2012 will be better than 2011. Just looking at trends that I see right now, I don't see a double dip recession. We are truly coming out, uh, we have come out of recession. We have uh, a very strong workforce, probably stronger than a lot of people give us credit for. Our tax structure is now more competitive than what people give us credit for. Arizona's job and economic scene and analysis from journalists Jonna Berry and Jeremy Duda tonight on Arizona Week. Once again, your moderator, Michael Chiha. Arizona registered a 22nd straight month of improved unemployment in January. Three economists say there's more to come. First, a look at the January numbers from the state's director of economic analysis, Aruna Murthy. Tell us a little bit about the January unemployment numbers for Arizona. January's unemployment rate uh, dropped from 9%, the revised rate in December, to 8.7% in January. Um, uh, we lost about 34,300 non-farm jobs. Job losses are very typical in January. Uh, we generally see post-holiday season, uh, you know, reduction in staff. So it's nothing unusual that uh, January had a loss. But you pointed out that in January, the number was the lowest loss in more than a decade for Arizona jobs, right? That's right. Historically, when we look at the loss in January compared to the past 10 years, it has been the lowest loss. However, that is also um, a reflection of a leaner staffing that happened in the last quarter of 2011. So although in October we had slightly uh, more uh, hiring than historic average, November and December had a lower uh, hiring than historic average. So if you average out the three months, you know, there was a leaner hiring than historically seen. So when you have a leaner hiring, you have fewer people that you can let go. Regardless, we are seeing trends of things getting better. And for the two years uh, continuously, we have been seeing decline in unemployment rate. And that unemployment rate peaked a couple of years ago at 10.8%? That's right. Uh, the unemployment rate peaked at 108 in November 2009. And it was at 10.8 Nove at, uh, for five months. So November to March, it was a plateaued at 10.8%. And then it declined, uh, started declining down. And now we are at 8.7%. And going forward, is there anything in the numbers that tells you what the rest of 2012 will be like? One thing at this point I can say is 2012 will be better than 2011. So my forecast for 2011 was 0.7% over the year growth, average annual growth. If you compare at what exactly 2011 landed up with, it was 0.973. So it's you know, 0.2% better than what we had forecasted, which is good news for Arizona. The last time we visited with you in October, we talked about the possibility of a double dip recession. Do you see anything in the numbers or in your knowledge as an economist that would lead you to think that could happen still? Nothing in the numbers that I see. Again, in reality, a lot of things can happen. Uh, we still have uh, the European, uh, you know, the crisis going on there. So, don't know how it will actually pan out, but the likelihood of it actually truly affecting a uh, recession, a big deal, is limited at this point. But it's hard to say. You, you know, the uncertainties in certain areas, things can happen. But just looking at trends that I see right now, I don't see a double dip recession. We are truly coming out. Uh, we have come out of recession. The gain in employment. I have always said that in the past. This particular recession, the gain in employment has been slow. We are gaining. Everything is trending in the positive direction. So overall, there is still a positive trajectory, except that the magnitude of it is not strong enough. So when you think about how deep this recession was, I mean, if you go back to it, we lost over 15 million people nationally. So if you keep that in perspective of the loss of the number of people, it'll take a long time for us to come back. And 
it's a very positive, actually a lot of sectors, Arizona is doing very well compared to the nation, you know. So I'm very optimistic for Arizona's uh, recovery, although at a slower pace. Let's talk about some of the sectors. What are the best performing sectors in Arizona right now? Right now, uh, the two strong sectors that I'm seeing, if based on over the year growth, is education and health services. Um, this was a recession, even during recession, you know, Compared to other sectors, education and health services had lower declines, uh, job losses. Whereby the other is a professional and business services sector is actually uh, doing relatively well. Um, if you compare, you know, leisure and hospitality sector has always been, you know, a strong sector for Arizona. So if you look at the leisure and hospitality over the again at right now, as of January, we are at 2.6 percent growth. Um, at the same level, in uh, for U.S., we are at 2.8%. So we are pretty close with regards to leisure and hospitality. In healthcare, Arizona is at 3.7% as of January over the year, whereas nationally we are only at 22 so we are doing way better in healthcare compared to the nation. Um, the other th sector we are doing way better is retail trade. Again, retail trade is a a subsector within trade, transportation, and utilities. So retail trade, we are growing at 2.3% compared to the national of 1.3%. And what's going on in the construction sector? Because that's where Arizona suffered great losses in jobs, right? Yep. Arizona, with regards to construction, um, you know, we have a very lean construction workforce now. So we have over the year positive growth in the construction industry, and it's actually doing better than the U.S. As of January, the construction over the year growth is 5.1%, and nationally, it's about 2.3%. So we are doing way better than the U.S. on average. But again, if you just look at the percent alone, it doesn't give you the whole picture because, you know, a small increase in number when the uh, number is small can show up as a large percent. A private sector economist says the good numbers come with public policy strategies that can drive business in Arizona. Here's Jim Rounds, senior economist for Elliott D. Pollock and Company of Scottsdale. We just got the January unemployment numbers for Arizona. Good news, unemployment rate down to 8.7 percent. Your reaction to what's going on trend-wise? Overall, we're starting to see those growth trends that started last year actually turn into real trends. You see two or three months of positive data, you get optimistic, but you're a little bit skeptical because you want to see if it's going to continue. So we've been seeing many months of positive data. Uh, the, the unemployment rate, I don't put a lot of weight on just yet because that only includes those individuals that are looking for work. And so, for example, at the national level, we've been promoting an unemployment rate of 8 to 9 percent. The effective rate is really around 13 or 14, if you count those disenfranchised people, the people that are underemployed. So it's a little worse situation, but you just want to look for improvement. So it's good that the data is a little bit more positive than what we saw last year, but don't put a lot of weight on that. I think focusing on the job growth and the job numbers are probably more important right now than the unemployment rate. Now, public policymakers everywhere are trying to figure out ways to grow the economy and grow jobs. And here in Arizona, it's no different. The state passed a big competitiveness package last year. Are any of the incentives that were voted on and have gone into place been making a difference from your perspective? I think you're going to start to see that difference probably in 2012. In fact, I think this calendar year is a year that people are going to point to where they feel like they're in economic recovery. We've been in recovery mode for a couple of years now, but 12 will be the year that we're starting to really feel it. And then 13, I think, is when we're going to see the economy accelerate, not quite to where we were during those wonderful times during the booms, but at least at a decent rate. Because we're seeing job growth statewide around 1.5% in the Phoenix area around 2%, Tucson around 1%. All those numbers are going to improve just because of the economic recovery. You throw in proper public policy, the economic development policies that have, put into, that have been put into place, because they've been designed well, not like some of the other states that have been given away far more than they're getting in return, I think you're going to start to see that momentum build. Now, you and other economists were quoted just this week as saying that let's wait and see what happens with the incentives that have been put in place before we layer on more. 
Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that, that actually ruffled some feathers, but sometimes you have to do that in public policy. Uh, w what we saw is the competitiveness package had a lot of really good solid provisions. We analyzed some, the legislature analyzed some, the governor analyzed some. It's a, it's a good package. Uh, I think we've gone from a state, though, that has been focused on let's do nothing but maybe cut taxes to induce growth to let's create a lot of incentives. There's a lot of things that go into growth, investment in education, physical infrastructure, in other words, roads, um, regulation policy, tax policy is a component. Uh, so there's a lot of things that go into it. I don't want us to go too far in the direction of just adding incentive after incentive after incentive. I want to add incentives, but investigate them thoroughly, review them, see if they're wise, see if we're competitive in an area before we add an incentive. And I think that we've added a lot of tools to the toolbox, but we still need to figure out what has that done in terms of our competitiveness. Are the things that are going on now going to help Arizona get away from the boom-bust economic cycles that it has experienced? Uh, no, but that's not a bad thing. Uh, from the fiscal policy side, I actually don't mind the business cycle because it's a great opportunity to trim some of the fat in government. Now, this past recession, the past cycle was just horrific, and so we ended up having to make decisions because there wasn't enough long-term planning, and a lot of the uh, the depth of the recession wasn't anticipated. The recession was anticipated, just not the depth. We're, we're a growth state. That's who we are. We need to embrace it. It's actually better to be a growth state and then figure out how to manage that than be a state like Michigan and figure out how do you keep people from leaving and not wanting to be in that location anymore. Arizona is not an economic island. So what things are there out there that are out of our control, either policy-wise or business-wise, that are affecting our economic growth? Um, that's a difficult question because we, we have our areas of strength. People are going to prefer to locate here uh, as compared to, say, Detroit, all else equal. Um, we're actually well positioned in terms of access to markets. Uh, we're a great, lo a great place for Southern California companies to relocate to. Uh, we have uh, a very strong workforce, probably stronger than a lot of people give us credit for. Our tax structure is now more competitive than what people give us credit for. You're doing some consulting work for the Commerce Authority, and you in the past have said that you think it's moving in the right direction. I want to ask if specifically you think the money it is investing from the, the deal closing fund is being invested wisely. The, the Commerce Authority, and this goes for a lot of the economic development groups. The Commerce Authority, GPEC, Maricopa County has their own economic development uh, uh, group. These groups are being fundamentally sound with their policies. They're not giving away more than they're getting in return. In other words, if a company is going to be providing $5 million of tax revenue over the next five years to the state, they're going to be setting limits on the incentives so that they don't exceed some realistic amount, a reasonable amount, I should say. This is what some of those other states like North Carolina got away from. Now, the other side of the incentive coin is how do you strategically avoid giving incentives to businesses that probably would come here anyway? Because as you've pointed out, Arizona is going to grow. That's tough. That's very tough. And how you do that is you do your research. You set thresholds that are very high in terms of, um, in terms of let's say, for, for wages. Uh, the, the threshold may be thirty-five dollars to $40,000 before they become eligible. We're probably not a state that's going to be attracting eighty to ninety thousand dollar a year jobs on our own right now. The majority of the recovery is going to be in those industries where we lost jobs. We're going to be recovering a lot of thirty to thirty five thousand dollar a year jobs. We're probably going to have to incentivize in some way those really high value added jobs. If we focus more and more on high value, you could virtually assure that you're only incentivizing those companies that truly would have gone elsewhere. Those were excerpts of interviews with Murthy and Rounds. See their complete interviews on our website, azweek.com. Joining me now is Laura Mwaniki Lyman, an economist with the University of Arizona's Economic and Business Research Center, to further discuss the state's emerging economy. Welcome. Thank you, Michael. The unemployment numbers came out this week, and you took a look at them. What did they tell you about how Arizona's economy is doing? Um, they were very encouraging because the uh, unemployment rate went down to 8.7% from a revised 9% uh, in December. 
which is a very positive uh, indication. Uh, what is now happening is growth in various sectors that have been Arizona's most Arizona's um, strengths, which include um, education, social services, hospitality. Uh, we're looking at a direction of movement in the manufacturing sector, mostly high tech. Now, in that realm, innovation is the byword of the day. Everyone talks about it. Is Arizona well positioned for innovative businesses right now? Arizona has the resources it needs to be creative and disseminate and implement knowledge uh, as new products, processes, and services that provide value-added advantages to farms. However, compared to its peers, Arizona seems to underperform. Um, a study by the Milken Institute that looks at uh, the state of Arizona in comparison to other states in the way it transfers technology to the market in a 21st century economy indicates Arizona ranked at, 12, at 19 percent sorry in 2009 compared to 17 percent in sorry 17 in 2007. So there have been some improvement there but not not enough is that right? Uh, actually, Arizona has underperformed because the, the numbers show that they've dropped. Arizona has ranked 19 from 17. And it has underperformed in human development investment and in funding, uh, providing capital funds, uh, risk capital and venture capital to small businesses and enterprises. Now, when it comes to our labor pool, does Arizona have the labor pool it needs to be able to compete in the in innovative economy? Arizona is struggling because... Uh, Looking at its history in the last few years, the universities have gone through very severe budget cuts, uh, state appropriation cuts, because of what the state had to go through to manage its budget. Because of that, the human development investment has been reduced. Now, we also know that Arizona is starting to compete in the global economy, especially because of our proximity to Mexico. Are there real opportunities here in Arizona for global competition and global economic growth? Oh, definitely. Arizona's uh, top trade partners is Mexico. He has great Arizona has great opportunities in the Latin American market and in China as well. Just looking at export data, Arizona exports to the global market increased to 17 uh, billion in 2011, and Mexico's was 5.7 billion from 5.1 billion. Mexico and China are some of the emerging markets that were not severely affected by the economic recession. And because of that, the middle class is demanding better quality services and products. These are great opportunities for Arizona to take advantage of. What kinds of things does Arizona send to Mexico and to China? Arizona is very specialized in the export of manufacturing inputs and final products. And these mostly end up in the maquila production facilities in Mexico. The twin plants. The twin plants, the um, production sharing facilities. Uh, Mostly the industries it's specialized specialized in this area are the computer sector, uh, transportation. Uh, we're seeing an increase in copper and uh, minerals extraction uh, due to the favorable commodity prices in the market. Um, so Arizona has great opportunities to expand in these areas as well. Arizona is also very specialized in facilitating fresh produce inputs imports from, Nogal from uh, Mexico through Nogales into the U.S. It has a specialized service and facilitates about 31% of fresh produce into the U.S. These opportunities Arizona has, but the challenges include improvements in border infrastructures and security. Now, you mentioned uh, China, and we know that Governor Brewer went to China last year, led a trade mission from the state to China. What are the opportunities for trade with China? They are enormous because China is a growing economy. It has an enormous middle class. Um, there have been increased demand in better food, including chicken, the opportunities for Arizona in agriculture, in manufacturing as well. Uh, the governor was probably taking advantage of the national export initiative that was put in place by President Obama last year. And the federal government will be providing services to promote export for small businesses into China and other countries globally. We have about a half a minute remaining, and in that time, would you tell us what Arizona businesses have to watch out for when they do business with China, which can be tough to do business with, right? Yes. Uh, China is very famous of not protecting intellectual property rights. That's one of the problems that if you're starting a business and want to export to China, you want to be aware of or produce your, your production, um, your products in China. Um, 
The other issues that have to do with labor issues, labor quality issues, humanitarian rights in the factories, and long working hours for workers in China. Laura Moniki Lyman of uh, the University of Arizona, thank you so much for being with me. Thank you, Michael, for having me. Now our journalists. Joining me via satellite link from Phoenix are the Arizona Republic's Jonna Berry and the Arizona Capital Times' Jeremy Duda. Jonna, the unemployment numbers are out and the economists are say it indicates a much stronger economy in Arizona. What are you hearing on the street from businesses? Well, businesses in Arizona are slowly starting to hire and expand, but I'm, hearing, I'm seeing a few key trends. One, businesses are being cautious with hiring. So they're starting to hire, but they're more likely to take on a candidate as a temporary worker or on a contract basis. Um, secondly, they're trying to diversify. Exports are up about 12%, and so businesses see exporting to other countries as a way to kind of protect themselves from economic fluctuations. The other thing I'm hearing from businesses is that consumer confidence is way up. Actually, consumer confidence in Arizona is as high as it was in May 2008. But that also means, though, that consumer spending isn't back up to 2008 levels yet. So businesses are having more consumers come into their shops, but they're still not getting the same kind of money that they had pre-recession. And, Jana, what, uh, what specific sectors are we seeing the opportunities come up in? Are there any? Well, traditionally in Arizona, private education and health care are the growth areas. But I would take that a step further. I would say one thing I'm seeing a lot of is, one, the hidden job market. So these, there are a lot of jobs that are being opened, that are being filled, that are not being advertised, which is why it's so important for people to get to know folks at the companies where they would like to work. Because a lot of companies just aren't posting all of the information and all the jobs that are available. The other thing that I'm seeing is hot pockets within segments. So for example, in technology, where not all technology jobs are hiring, but software developers in almost any industry are in big demand. Also in terms of healthcare, healthcare may not be hiring in all different types of jobs, but certain sectors like veterinary care are very hot right now. A veterinary school just announced that it was gonna open in Arizona because of the shortage. And Jeremy, you wrote this week about uh, economists saying that uh, the public sector doesn't need to provide more incentives for the moment until we see how the current incentives work out. Public sector is probably saying, well, look at the, what's happening with the numbers, so they are working out. But would you talk a little bit about what you found in that story? Well, we, well in the past few years, we've gone from being a relatively low incentive state to just in the past couple of years, you know, having a lot of these things on the book, especially we passed this you know, blockbuster uh, tax cut and tax incentive bill last year, the competitiveness package that um, you know, put a whole bunch of these things in the book. It created the Arizona Commerce Authority, and they kind of doled these out. But still this year, there's a lot of folks who you know, say we need to do a little bit more, cut capital gains taxes, create, you know, help get uh, capital to businesses, you know, various tax credits, the motion picture tax credit is coming back. So there, there might be a little bit less impetus for this stuff now because, uh, as John said, the economy is improving. But everyone still wants to do something. They still want to try and help out businesses, especially in rural areas, especially in an election year, of course, too. <laughs> But, of course, The Economist, as uh, we heard Jim Round say a little earlier on the program, are, are saying, let's wait to see how this, these work out. We don't want to give away too much. Uh, what are you hearing from the public sector in response to that? Well, it depends on who you talk to. You know, one of the arguments uh, you know, that uh, Jim and other economists will make is that these things, of course, do take money out of the state's treasury. And the argument that the proponents will always make is that they're going to bring in more jobs than they or they're going to bring in more tax revenue through these new jobs, through more economic activity than they end up costing. But a lot of economists, I know Jim feels this way in large part, is that a lot of them feel that that's not really the case. There isn't really a lot of evidence that these things really do increase economic activity enough to offset the costs. And in the end, if that kind of, uh, you view that, that kind of discourages you possibly from making other uh, you know, changes that will make the state more attractive to businesses, if you just say, well, we've done this, we don't need to you know, improve infrastructure or education. You know, that kind of thing, and so there's a lot of concerns with with increasing this, especially since you know these things have only been on the on the books most of them for about a year. We don't really know what effect they're having. And Jana, what are you hearing from businesses uh, and even people looking for work about whether any of these incentives are making a difference at this point? 
Um, in terms of the incentives that the uh, state has provided so far, like for example, you know, we have this new Commerce Authority um, that says that it's attracted 3,000 jobs to Arizona and led to $150 million in investment. Um, I think if you talk to the average business and job seeker on the street, um, they would probably tell you that it would take a long time for that kind of investment to finally kind of filter its way down to ordinary people in Arizona. Um, keep in mind, Arizona lost about 300,000 jobs during a recession. So that 3,000 jobs that's been attracted to Arizona is only a really small fraction of what we need to make up. And so as long as we're on that topic, Jana, what are the estimates for how long it's going to take Arizona to be made whole again in that regard? In other words, regain those 300,000 jobs plus whatever the population growth is in the meantime? Well, it's kind of funny. It seems as though every time Arizona economists get together, the estimate gets a little bit further off. So uh, the last time economists uh, came to consensus on this, uh, the estimate was it would take about three to four more years. So that would be about 2015 in order for Arizona to get peak employment um, again, which is the amount of jobs that we had prior to the economic collapse. Jeremy, what are you hearing uh, at the Capitol about whether they're going to continue to push these incentives, even though the economists say there's not a lot of proof yet that they're having an effect? Oh, well, ever, everyone who's interested in these things is still going to continue pushing them. There's a major bill uh, being pushed through by uh, Representative J.D. Mesnard, and this is uh, in conjunction with uh, House Speaker Andy Tobin, something he's been working on for a long time, cuts capital gains taxes, uh, implements some uh, tax credits for, re for regulations. So nobody's really going to stop. Um, but what a lot of economists say is we don't really need to have the best incentives. We don't need to have the lowest taxes. We need to be competitive. And we might be running into an area where we have some uh, you know, diminishing returns now if we just keep piling these things on top of each other. And, Jana, uh, we have just about a half a minute remaining. And in that time, give us some sense of what people are saying on the street, people looking for work. Is there more optimism in the workforce that things are getting better, as we're hearing from businesses and economists? Um, when I talk to job seekers, they say that in certain segments and in certain industries, they're definitely seeing more job openings. But I think that what they're also seeing is that the job market has kind of changed permanently. So there's always going to be a lot of competition. There's go always probably from this point on going to be more computer screening of job applications. Also, a lot of job seekers have said for the jobs that are open, wages, frankly, are lower than they were when the recession began. That's our program for Friday, March 9th, 2012. We're a little more than five weeks from the special primary election in Congressional District 8. And you can stay informed about the candidates and issues at the Your Vote 2012 Election Center at azpm.org. For Arizona Week, I'm Michael Chihak.